Hello and welcome to another video. There are some mathematical rules that you know that apply to real numbers. They apply to numbers you can find on the number line, but when you go away from the number line and you start dealing with imaginary numbers, some of those rules that you, you used for real numbers do not apply to imaginary numbers. And that's why I want you to watch this video to the end. If you learn something, make sure you give it a like and make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed and leave a comment in the comment section. Let's get into the video. So ideally, when you're given a problem like this, square root of five times the square root of five, well, we know we're just supposed to multiply um, five by five, so we're supposed to have this. Let's start solving. Um, square root of five times the square root of five, we're supposed to have the answer to be the square root of 25. And the square root of 25 is five. Okay, remember that. The square root of 25 is five, not plus or minus five, because I've heard people say that there's no plus or minus when you're dealing with a number, okay? It's when you're solving an equation and you're trying to find the square root of x squared, that's when you get the absolute value of x. So that's going to give you plus or minus 5, and that gives you 5. Okay, let's go to number 2. So that's easy, right? Okay, let's go to this one, number 2. The square root of negative 5 times the square root of 5. The square root of negative 5 times the square root of 5. Now you would be tempted to say, why don't I just do the square root of 5 times the square root of negative? It will work at this point, but I want you to not, once you see that this is not real, because you see that this is going to give you an imaginary output because of the negative 5 under the square root sign. So what you want to do is rewrite this expression as the square root of negative 1 times 5 times the square root of 5. Okay, this will be the same thing as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 5, then times the square root of 5. So this gives you the square root of negative 1 times, now you can apply this rule here because these two are real, this was not real. This is not real, okay? So do not apply, let's multiply both sides. You know, let's multiply both terms so we can get square root of negative 25, which in this case would work out, but in other cases it won't work out. So just save yourself by writing it this way. Well, what is the square root of negative 1? It is i. And what is the square root of this? It's going to be the same answer as this. That's the square root of um, um, 25. So your answer is going to be 5i. We're going to get 5 from here and i here. And this is going to be the answer to square root of negative 5 times the square root of 5. Okay, let's do something more complicated. Let's go to the third one. Both of them are not real. The output from here will not be real. The output from here will not be real. So I know that there's a temptation for you to say, I am just going to multiply negative five by negative five. So let's say, let me get rid of this and then I use this board for both the rest of the questions on the board. Let's go. Yeah. Okay, if you're presented with this problem, there's a temptation for you or a tendency for you to say, oh, I know the answer. I'm just going to multiply these two and then I'll get the square root of negative 5 times negative 5, which is going to be the square root of positive 25, and your answer is going to be 5. The problem is that will be wrong because you're applying a principle that is true in real number cases, but in the case of imaginary numbers, it's not true. So because these two numbers are imaginary numbers, you cannot just put them under the square root sign together. It's always good for you to write them out with the I showing. That's why I titled this video, How to Work with I. So make sure you get your I from the beginning before you do any kind of simplification. Okay, so I'm going to erase this because this is incorrect. So the correct thing to do in this case is to write each term out as imaginary numbers using the i. That's why I titled this as um, working with i. So we're going to rewrite this as square root of 5i because this i will be the square root of negative 1 
and this would be times imaginary square root of 5, another one, square root of 5i. Okay, now with this, we can then multiply because we've taken care of both of them under the sign. We know these are i's. Now, what, what happens with i's? Well, you know that square root of 5 times square root of 5 is going to give you square root of 25 because there's no negative under the sign. So this is going to be the square root of 25. And, this, and i times i is going to be i squared. So that's what you're multiplying. And this is going to give you 5. And the square of i is going to be negative 1. So the answer to this answer question is negative 5. Now, you would say, well, I could have known from the beginning that if I multiply the square root of negative 5 by the square root of negative 5, I should get negative 5. Well, that's what we got. That's correct. But imagine if you multiply both of them together. You're going to get positive 25, which is going to give you the same answer as what you would get when you multiply these two. So that's where the problem is. You want to make sure you write out the i to get your answer. So looking at this, you should get what you have here because you're, the square root of a number times the square root of that number should give you that number, okay? But if we had multiplied together, the negative signs would have, dis would have disappeared and then you will get a different answer other than negative 5. So let's test our knowledge, okay? Before you move on, I want you to try this and tell me what you think your answer is going to be. Okay, negative 5 times square root of negative 10 times square root of negative 2. What would be your answer? Last one. The time is up. Now, so let's solve this. I'm going to write the answers here. Okay, I'm going to do this. So what you have is this. I'm going to write this out as square root of negative 5. Square root of 5i. Because it's imaginary. This also is imaginary. Multiplied. I'm multiplying now by square root of 10i, this is also imaginary, and this also is imaginary, that would be square root of 2i. Guess what? If we multiply all the numbers together, this is going to be 5 times 10 times 2, and that should be 100. So that's the square root of 100, okay, multiplied by the square root of i times i times i. That's going to be i cubed. Well, I know that the square root of 100 is 10, but what is the cube of i? Well, remember that i equals square root of negative 1. So when you cube it, it's going to be square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. Well, based on what we learned here, we're supposed to get negative 1 here from these two and then times this, but this is i. So we're going to get negative 1 times i, which gives us negative i, and negative i times 10 is, so this is going to be negative i, which gives us negative 10i. That's the answer to this question. I hope this makes a lot of sense to you. If it does, hit the like button. And make sure you subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section. And remember that those who stop learning have stopped living. Never stop learning. Bye-bye.